Hey guys, Dr. St. Jean here at drstjean.com. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how low stomach acid can actually promote the growth of bacteria, parasites, yeast and fungus, and viruses. I'm also gonna give you some solutions and ways you can test for this. So keep watching. As a functional medicine practitioner, it drives me insane as to how often something like low stomach acid is overlooked in daily practice. And that's a big problem because low stomach acid chronically can lead to some really serious problems like stomach cancer, GI infections, chronic GI infections, rheumatoid arthritis, and a bunch more. So what are the symptoms of low stomach acid? You can have things like abdominal tenderness, and pain, you can have bloating, you can have SIBO, you can have parasites, you can have indigestion or heartburn, you can have gas following a meal, you can have nutrient deficiencies, constipation, there's a whole host of symptoms and signs that would relate to low stomach acid. Now keep in mind, this is a list here that is related to that, but some of these symptoms can be related to other conditions. So it's really important you don't get bogged down in chasing symptoms and you just find a practitioner who knows what they're doing and can test for this properly. So now you know the symptoms of low stomach acid, but what is the underlying root causes which in the end result in low stomach acid? Things like allergies, excessive consumption of alkaline water. Stress is a huge one. I can't tell you how many patients I see where they have low stomach acid and stress is a major component of that. Of course, excessive carbohydrate consumption, alcohol consumption. There's drugs, specific ones like acid neutralizers and PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, and of course, several more. But really what you wanna do is you wanna figure out what the cause is because you can chase symptoms and treat symptoms as much as you want, but until you get to the root cause of your low stomach acid, you're not really gonna get it better. So you're probably wondering why stomach acid in general is really, really important. There's two reasons, and one of them is the purpose of this video. And that would be the first one I'm gonna talk about, which is it acts as the first line of defense against bacteria, parasites, yeast, and viruses. So if you have low stomach acid, you don't have as much of a defense system, if you will, against these invaders, and they'll start to accrue. These pathogens will start to get by that first barrier of defense and start taking up shop inside your body, which is not good. Now, how does HCL act as that first line of defense? It basically triggers an enzyme in the stomach called pepsin. And pepsin is a protein digestive enzyme and it digests the proteins that you consume, but it just so happens that these bugs also are made of protein. So it starts to break them apart and kills them. So it acts as a really good immune line of defense. Also, another reason why HCL or stomach acid is really important is that it promotes healthy digestion and absorption. So you can have someone that's eating a really, really good diet. I mean, it's on point, right? But they might not be absorbing the right nutrients and digesting them because the stomach acid is too low. So that's a really big problem. Uh, also, the duodenum, which is the first portion of your small intestine, the, the section of your bowel where it empties the contents of your stomach, won't really accept those uh, contents if the environment isn't acidic enough. So then that results in all that food being stuck in your stomach, causing more bloating, causing the burping, causing the pain, some of the symptoms that we just briefly talked about related to low stomach acid. Let's talk about some of the solutions. The first step is to test and not guess. So I would suggest, that's a, <laughs> I didn't even plan that. That was a good rhyme right there. But the first thing I would suggest is a betaine HCL challenge test. That's a decent option if you're looking to save some money. The accuracy is eh. I would prefer someone get a functional GI test that's gonna give us a decent uh, idea of the levels of HCL or stomach acid in your stomach. Um, I like to use the 401H from BioHealth, but I'll use some other ones depending on the patient. Um, this is definitely a great first step. I can tell you that Typically, 90 to 99% of people that I'm treating with functional medicine have some level of low stomach acid. So sometimes we can bypass these tests and save the testing for other more important factors and data that we need. But in general, this is a great first step. The next recommendation I have is eat a real diet. If you can't hunt it, fish it, or pick it, don't put it in your mouth. Paleo is always a great option to start with or another diet similar that's anti-inflammatory, nutrient dense, that has real 
whole foods in it, that is gonna play a major role in fixing low stomach acid. Another great solution for low stomach acid is correcting nutrient deficiencies. That's so important, I can't tell you enough. Uh, the big one is zinc, right? So you can get zinc from a supplement form or you can get it from uh, food. So think things like beef, uh, lamb, lobster, salmon, chicken, turkey, crab meat, those are all great sources of zinc. Also, you want to supplement with a multivitamin that has vitamin C, E, uh, what else, B6, minerals like magnesium, because those enhance zinc absorption. So zinc is just one, but it's a great example because it's super important for low stomach acid. So the last solution I'm going to tell you about here has to do with reducing your pathogen load really, really important. You wanna make sure if you have any bugs in there that you're clearing them out. How do you figure that out? You get a functional GI panel that I talked about, like the 401H from BioHealth. You gotta work with a practitioner that can access that type of health, that testing. And then you wanna make sure the doctor you're working with actually knows how to clear out these bugs. You can't just throw antimicrobials and herbs at it. There's specific phases and steps that you have to take to safely do this and effectively do this. There's, of course, other solutions that we'll talk about in the future and that you'll find out more when you work with a practitioner that knows what they're doing in this regard. So there you have it. To answer the question of this video, yes, low stomach acid can promote bacteria, parasites, yeast, and viruses. So if you have some of the symptoms we talked about, get it checked out, make sure you order the testing, make sure you're working with someone that knows how to flow through treatment properly and address the underlying root causes. If you want more information about your health and functional medicine in general, click the link below to get to our video blog and articles. There's a ton of information on there. If you wanna work with myself and get to the root cause of your health conditions, also click the schedule link button right below. This is Dr. St. Jean from drstjean.com. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.